किस तरह Good morning. My name is Arna Gurg, and my topic is disorders of amino acid metabolism. And my moderator is Dr. Tanya Ma. Amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. They contain an amino group, a carboxyl group, and a side chain that is specific to each amino acid. Essential amino acids are those which cannot be synthesized in the body and therefore must be supplied in the diet. These essent these help in function and regulation of neurotransmitters in brain that control mood and behavior. Out of 20 amino acids, 10 are essential, and it is remembered by the famous mnemonic PVT Tim Hall. Uh, these are phenylalanine, valine, tryptophan, threonine, isoleucine, methionine, histidine, arginine, leucine, and lysine. Uh, but his arginine and histidine are called semi essential or conditionally essential amino acids as their synthesis in the body is limited, and also it does not synthesize in sufficient quantities in infants, children, and in sick, person, sick people. Classification of amino acids based on side chain. They are divided into aliphatic amino acids, aromatic amino acids, acidic side chains, and beta, uh, basic side chains. Aliphatic amino acids include glycine, alanine, valine, leucine, and isoleucine. Aromatic amino acids are phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan, histidine. Acidic side chains are aspartic acid and glutamic acid. And basic side chains include arginine, lysine, and histidine. Now some disorders of amino acid metabolism. First of all, so non-ketotic hyperglycemia. It is due to defect in glycine cleavage system. Glycine level in blood, uh, glycine level increases in blood, urine, and CSF. It is diagnosed by elevated CSF blood glycine ratio. And the clinical features are severe mental retardation, seizure, and lethargy. Uh, next is maple syrup urine disease. It is due to a defect in catabolism of branched chain amino acids, which are valine, leucine, and isoleucine. The basic biochemical defect here is deficient decarboxylation of branched chain keto acids and due to excretion of branched chain keto acids in urine, which is known as branched chain ketonuria. 
The characteristic feature of MSUD is smell of burnt sugar in urine. This disease starts in first week of life. And uh, its clinical features are mental retardation, conversion, seizures, abnormal muscle tone, acidosis, and coma and death. Treatment here includes restricted intake of branching amino acids and thionine supplements in diet, as thionine helps in decarboxylation of branching keto acids. Next is phenylketonuria. It is an autosomal recessive disorder. It is due to the deficiency of enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase. Here, phenylalanine cannot be converted to tyrosine, hence, phenylalanine, hence it accumulates and its level in blood increases. It forms other metabolites like phenylpyruvate, phenyllactate, phenylacetate. The uh, clinical features are mental retardation, agitation, hyperactivity, tremors, conversion, and microcephaly. Characteristic feature of these uh, include hypopigmentation. These children have fair skin, blue eyes, and mousy bo body odor. Uh, Diagnosis, it can be diagnosed by a ferric chloride test, which is positive, DNPH test is positive, but the best test is mass spectroscopy. Uh, this child here, uh, he has uh, white skin, uh, white hair, and blue eyes. Uh, treatment includes a uh, low phenylalanine diet, tyrosine, and tryptophan. Next is heart tooth disease. It is also autosomal recessive. It occurs due to absorption, because absorption of aromatic acids from intestine as well as reabsorption from renal tubules are defective. So tryptophan accumulates, uh, tryptophan is excreted in urine. Deficiency of serum niacin occurs, which is derived from tryptophan and it causes pellagra like symptoms. Clinical features are dermatitis, dementia, diarrhea, depression, ataxia, and death. Uh, treatment patient improves when we put, it, uh, put them on high protein diet with niacin supplementation and decreased sun exposure. Next is L-Keptonuria. It is an autosomal recessive uh, disease. It is due to deficiency of enzyme homogentisate oxidase and results in excretion of homogentisic acid in urine. Homogentisic acid polymerizes to form l bodies, which gets deposited in the intervertebral discs, bones, joints, cartilage, and connective tissue. Urine, when it when comes in contact with atmospheric oxygen, turns black. Uh, clinical features is blackening of urine, black pigmentation of nose, pinna, skin, and uh, Opnotic uh, arthralgia and arthritis. Here, uh, Benedict's test and uh, ferric chloride tests are positive. In this uh, figure, we can see the specimen which is uh, after being left uh, on standing for 15 minutes shows some darkening at the surface due to oxidation of homogentisic acid. After two hours, the urine is uh, entirely black. And this is the vertebral, uh, vertebral disc. It shows blackish discoloration due to deposition of alkeptone bodies. Uh, treatment here includes a low protein diet large dose of vitamin C to slow down accumulation of homogentific acid in cartilage, and a new drug, nitisinone, is used, which inhibits uh, PHPP hydroxylase and decreases homogentific levels. Next is homocysteinuria. It is also an autosomal recessive disease. The defect is in cystathionine beta synthetase. Hence, cysteine is not formed, and homocysteine levels increases in blood, and uh, it comes in urine. Clinical features are ectopia lentis, myopia, glaucoma, Pectus carinatum, osteoporosis, mental retardation, Charlie Chaplin gait, seizures, atherosclerosis, MI, and stroke. Treatment here is low methionine diet with pyridoxine. Now, uh, psychiatry and disorders of uh, amino acid metabolic, uh, metabolism. Uh, some studies indicate that psychotic attacks, chronic delusion, or disorganized behavior and personality changes, mild mental retardation can be due to homocysteinuria and uh, non ketotic hyperglycemia. Phenylketonuria can exhibit depressed mood, anxiety, and psychosocial difficulties. Children with phenylketonuria show lower IQ, slow information processing, reduced learning capacity, mild executive impairment, and educational difficulties. A high level, a high level of blood uh, and urine homo, uh, urinary homocysteine is associated with pathophysiology of autism, uh, autism spectrum disease. A study shows that people who take proline-rich diet are more prone to depression. These are my references. Thank you.
good morning uh, myself pavel ma and uh, my topic is in born errors of carbohydrate metabolism and my moderator is dr astajan what are in born errors of metabolism these are a heterogeneous group of disorders that may be inherited or may occur as a result of spontaneous mutations these disease involve failure of metabolic pathways due to deficient enzymes cofactors or transporters involved in either breakdown or storage of carbohydrate fatty acids and proteins these errors are very rare and their occurrence is one in 2500 pattern of inheritance 90% of inborn errors of metabolism are autosomal recessive of the remaining 10% two thirds are x linked and one thirds are autosomal dominant autosomal dominant uh since it's a rarity uh, there are only few uh, disorders the one is familial hypercholesterolemia and the x linked trait is leish nehan syndrome and the maternal inheritance includes mitochondrial disorders of energy classification of inborn errors of metabolism it can be an error in amino acid metabolism carbohydrate metabolism lipid metabolism protein metabolism pigment metabolism unknown biochemical defects when to suspect for inborn errors of metabolism in neonates you can uh, uh, look for the family history previously undiagnosed death or unexplained severe illness in childhood presence of group of congenital anomalies or obvious dysmorphism extreme or exceptional presentation of common ailments like infection or metabolic stress like diarrhea neurological symptoms unexplained encephalopathy and unusual smell of body or urine clues in the history positive family history consanguinity of uh, family to uh, failure to thrive unexplained vomiting and diarrhea dystonia developmental delay seizures respiratory distress jaundice unusual odor frequent infection and behavioral disturbances clinical feature uh, th there are some general clinical features of inborn errors of metabolism which can be uh, uh, commonly seen in uh, any kind of inborn errors of metabolism these are neurological abnormalities and gastrointestinal symptoms the neurological abnormalities include developmental delay loss of milestone poor tone poor suck seizures and the gastrointestinal symptoms include vomiting hepatomegaly food intolerance diarrhea denying to eat and dehydration note inborn errors of metabolism should be considered in the differentials of any child with neurological and all gastrointestinal findings also in children children with failure to thrive recurrent feeding issues gastroparesis autonomic instability or behavioral or learning issues now uh, i come to the topic of carbohydrate metabolism carbohydrate is in food is present as starch disaccharide that is sucrose and lactose glucose and fructose breakdown of starch to disaccharides and to monosaccharide is done by pancreatic amylase and intestinal brush border cells absorption is only in the small intestine and the absorbable form is only as a monosaccharide the absorption is through sglt1 sodium dependent channels for glucose and galactose which is a energy dependent uh, transport and glut5 which is a facilitated diffusion for fructose glycogenesis or glycogenesis excess excess of glucose is stored in liver by anabolic process into glycogen which is a stored form of glucose in our body glycolysis glucose is broken down to yield atp and produce water and co2 as by products in every cell of the body and there is a uh, when the muscles are in uh, when the muscles are used in excess the body also uh, does the glucose metabolism with anaerobic respiration in which lactic acid is produced which can then be converted into glucose again by the process of gluconeogenesis it is the synthesis of glucose from non carbohydrate substances like lactate amino acids and glycerol and it only occurs in liver and kidney this is uh, where we can see how glucose is utilized in the body and 
what happens to glucose and uh, different body parts. Classification of carbohydrate and metabolism defects. Congenital lactose intolerance, galactosemia, glycogen storage disease, and diabetes mellitus. Congenital lactose intolerance. The appearance of a clinical symptom after ingestion of lactose is called as lactose intolerance. If the symptoms doesn't appear, uh, we don't even know about the disease until investigated or reported. It is a result of primary lactase enzyme deficiency and the clinical symptoms are nausea, vomiting, abdominal distension, cramps, flatulence, flatus, diarrhea after taking milk or milk products. Diagnosis, breath, hydrogen test and analysis of lactate activity. And the treatment is restricting the lactose intake. Galactosemia. It is a condition in which the body is unable to metabolize galactose. There are three forms of the disease. Galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase, that is GAL deficiency, which is an enzyme. Uh, deficiency of galactose kinase, GAL. Deficiency of galactose 6-phosphate epimerase. And the uh, most severe form and the most common form is the GAL deficiency. Clinical symptoms are convulsions, irritability, jaundice, vomiting, mental disability, delayed speech development, and tremors. And the diagnosis is done by uh, assessing the enzyme activity in RBC for GAID. Treatment is again the lactose 3 diet. Glycogen storage disease. It is a very rare autosomal recessive disorder primary affecting liver, skeletal muscle, heart, and CNS. Characterized by hypoglycemia, seizure, hepatosplenomegaly, failure to thrive, recurrent bacterial infection, and neutropenia. Treatment as a recombinant human granulocyte colony stimulating factor, GCSF, for recurrent infection. Congenital diabetes mellitus, it is a very rare disorder, occurs shortly after birth, characterized by hyperglycemia, types of congenital diabetes mellitus. The one is transient diabetes mellitus, which remits spontaneously and is seen in 50% of the cases, and there is a permanent diabetes mellitus, which requires lifelong treatment. Clinical manifestation is severe intrauterine growth retardation, hyperglycemia, dehydration, developmental delay, and neurological and cardiological uh, cardiac anomalies. And treatment is insulin. Now we come to the topic, can uh, the psychiatric childhood disorder be due to inborn errors of carbohydrate metabolism? Uh, uh, researchers have uh, done uh, a very little work uh, around this topic. And uh, they found the possible pathogenesis to be accumulation of toxic levels of normal metabolites or complex compounds into uh, cells and uh, neural pathways. And uh, since carbohydrate is a main source of uh, generating ATPs, therefore, uh, the uh, second uh, possible pathogenesis is difficulty to generate ATP within the cell as much as required. This above can lead to disruption of late neuro neurodevelopmental processes or via chronic or acute disruption of excitatory inhibitory neurotransmitter systems, which will eventually lead to seizures and coma, behavioral disturbances, and psychiatric illnesses like ADSD, autism, psychosis, learning disorder, and eating disorder. These are my references. Any questions from students? This is something that many people don't know more than us because they know of the previous video. Any questions? Any questions?
have you people seen any? Uh, where you suspected that there is some metabolic problem? These two morphological features you have. Why, why did you come to psychiatry? So we are almost as new year. What are the clinical features in that? Almost as new year. Hyperactivity or hyperactivity? Is more Does this If you have to say, you have to say, you So, most of the patients that you see in intellectual disability, in most of the people, what you do is stop at the primary location. You don't try to find out the symbol or the clinical manifestation of. Some maybe Caesar, some there are no Caesar, some there are neurological deficits. So we should attempt to try to find what is there. The reason being, in some cases, for example, like the paradigm, it's in deficiency. Nowadays, it is there. In, in the Muslim, if you go, like uh, even in the, uh, we say five years ago, we went to camp. Then there are lots of patients who have retinoids. So similarly, uh, there are lots of metabolic. So we should learn to identify. Why? Because we may have okay, in coming years, we may have specific treatment. So uh, nowadays a lot of work is being done on you can say yeah, genetic manipulations. So we, we may have treatment, we may, we may be able to change the expression, we may be able to the theoretical, but I think in your lifetime you may see. So that will only come if you will be able to diagnose these mass error of metabolism. Also, if there is a concrete diagnosis, early if at the age of two, three, four years, we are able to diagnose. You can tell the prognosis to the parents. That way. All these <coughs> symptoms. Well, we should not stop only at okay. Both of you made very good presentations. And I think that uh, you spoke very well. Our slides were very good. On one slide, two or three points. Okay. That you can, I think, if you will. Maybe uh, you, you uh, described very well. So, in improvement, what you can do, you can say there are no charts or something. Picture specifically to that. So that will help in engaging the people. Okay, speaking is good. So, uh, how you need to engage the people? Fewer, fewer, you could just break that slide into two. Okay, four points in one slide, four in next. So that way, uh, the attention of the audience is there because if they will see eight points, the automatically the mind goes down. Right? Otherwise, you spoke very well. You also. Uh, 
So next time we'll do together. Then you you are still here right now. Okay. So next next presentation. Okay. Thank you. If you people have any topics which you want to cover, you can yourself, you know, come up. Okay. We have posted some topics for you. But if you want something specifically, I think you can offer them in the introduction. If somebody wants to teach them.